Let us look at aircraft life cycle cost estimation. Before that we should learn the breakdown of life cycle cost. As we know the LCC consists of the total cost of the aircraft from the cradle to the grave and it is inclusive of the cost incurred in designing the aircraft or conceiving the aircraft which is this element. Then producing the aircraft and producing the airframe engines and avionics which is this element. Then we need to provide some ground support equipment and initial spares that is this one and then there may be the need to construct some special test facilities uh, to check out the various concepts and then we have a largest component which is the operations and maintenance cost, fuel, oil, crew, maintenance, recurring costs, insurance and, uh, and finally you have the disposal cost. Okay. So, these are the elements. Uh, of uh, LCC which we have to consider. Notice that the LCC will depend upon the maximum takeoff weight of the aircraft, it will depend upon what is the maximum velocity at the mission altitude, how much is the quantity produced in the design testing and evaluation phase and production phases and how are the costs of these phases amortized. Uh, the size of the boxes in the figure shown here in the center is proportional to the magnitude of these costs. Let us look at each of these cost elements now. The RDTNE cost stands for the research, development, testing and evaluation cost. Uh, in summary, we can call it as the cost to conceive and design the aircraft. There are many components of RDTE. The first uh, component is the technology research that is studying the technology that has to be incorporated in the aircraft uh, and then <coughs> the next uh, component is the design engineering or the effort that goes into the carrying out of the conceptual design. After the design is uh, completed, we take a decision and may manufacture a prototype. This prototype is used for actual flight testing. So, the ground testing and the flight testing is the next component. After that, we have the evaluation of the operational suitability of the aircraft. This can, this can also be uh, done at the customer site or uh, if it is a military aircraft for example, you may fly the aircraft at the locations uh, <coughs> where the aircraft is going to be used and then you have certification or the approval. Now, the certification is of two types, there is a mission compliance certification which is done in conjunction with the user agency or the customer. And then you have also need to obtain the airworthiness certification for the aircraft. And last but not the least is the design documentation. Many people ignore this and this is a huge component and also uh, it is important to document the whole procedure in detail uh, which will help us in understanding what uh, the various decisions uh, were and why were they taken and also it helps in uh, keeping. Uh, uh, repository of the design knowledge. Now, the cost estimation methods for the RDTNE phase are uh, you know various levels. One simple way is you can just um, assume that uh, there is a particular weight per kilogram of the aircraft and there is something called as a defense contractors planning report or DCPR weight. Uh, this particular weight basically consists of only the parts which are manufactured by the aircraft manufacturing company and all the other parts which are outsourced or procured from other vendors are not included in this particular weight. Okay. So, it is basically the empty weight of the aircraft minus the weight of the various bought out items and there is a huge list of items which a manufacturer buys from other ancillary suppliers and does not necessarily manufacture uh, themselves. So, um, one estimate is that you just multiply the DCPR weight by a number like 150 or 300 depending on the aircraft type and you will get the basic estimate of the aircraft cost. We admit that this particular method is a very crude method. Then there are two other approaches, one approach is called as the activity based approach in which 
the actual tasks to be carried out in doing the conceptual design are detailed and a work breakdown structure is created and then the cost of each element is going to be added up. Uh, that is called as activity based costing. Then you also have got the cost estimation relationship or CER based costing. Uh, these are used essentially when you want to compare various aircraft and when you want to have an estimate of the likely costs based on the past experience. So, there are formulae based on the DCPR weight uh, parameter like maximum speed, production rate, etcetera, and these formulas are used to calculate or to estimate the cost of various elements. So, when you do a CER based uh, RDTNE estimation, one model which is very popular is the DAPCA 4 model given by the RAND corporation. So, in the DAPCA 4 model, this is not the only model, but this is a very popular model and uh, it is explained in detail in Raymer's textbook also. In the DAPCA 4 model given by the RAND corporation, one estimates the hours needed for various aspects of the RDTNE phase and the production of the prototypes. And these particular activities are divided into the engineering activity, the tooling activity, the manufacturing activity and the quality control activity. Uh, we assume here that some n number of prototypes of the aircraft are going to be fabricated and hence we have the requirement for tooling and manufacturing of the aircraft. So, what we do is based on certain important parameters which affect the values of the hours needed you estimate these hours and then you multiply by, by the man hour rates. Okay. And then there are other costs which are not easy to estimate, they have to be added as a number uh, by estimating directly. For example, the cost of providing the developmental support, the wind tunnel testing, the FEM analysis, then uh, the cost of the material that is used for manufacturing, the cost of flight testing. And then <coughs> every design activity is actually uh, an activity that a company incurs and it incurs lots of uh, expenditure, those expenditures have to be financed. So, there is going to be a financing cost and if a company has to sustain itself in the future, it also has to charge a profit for the activity. So, additional cost elements of financing and profit also come. Let us see how engineering hours are estimated for various uh, aspects. So, for airframe design analysis and test engineering, uh, for configuration control and systems engineering, we calculate the amount of hours which are going to be put in by the engineers to carry out this part. Then there are support hours, the hours required to be spent by the design teams in integrating the avionics system and integrating the propulsion system on the aircraft. Uh, the hours of effort needed in carrying out the activity of producing the drawings for tooling and the drawings for production planning or the production planning activity. Uh, this particular cost is mainly incurred during the RDTNE, but also during the production phase. So, basically there is a rough um, idea, a rough estimate that if you are producing a 500 hour, if you are producing 500 aircraft, then the total engineering effort that is needed to put in to support the design and fabrication and production of 500 aircraft is only 3 times the effort of uh, just producing one airframe because the entire effort uh, for the design and for the configuration control etcetera uh, and also the support will be there whether you make one aircraft or you make 500 aircraft. But the tooling, production, planning and manufacturing those costs are going to be higher if you can, if you have a higher quantity. Now, tooling uh, basically <coughs> is uh, the preparation for production that is called as tooling. Uh, you need to create tools and fixtures, you need to create molds and dies, you need to program the NC machines and you have to design and fabricate the test apparatus. All of these requires tooling. And the tooling for production aircraft is different from tooling for the prototype aircraft. Okay. Uh, and then during the production also you have to provide some tooling support. So, this is an important uh, activity in the life cycle of an aircraft production. The next is manufacturing and quality control labor. Manufacturing involves forming, machining, fastening, 
it involves making the sub assemblies and assembling them, it involves routing of the hydraulics, pneumatics, electrolytics, it involves installation of the items which have been purchased like the engine, the avionics the subsystems and there are many airframe subcontractors who are also going to work with the uh, power with the engineers of the manufacturing organization all of them together uh, constitute the manufacturing. Then quality control is an important aspect because you would like to get things right at the first time and you would not like to have uh, many defects in the production because that affects the life of the aircraft. So, inspection at the receiving when the material arrives or the, or, or the BO items arrive production assembly and all these items they have to be costed. Then there are some development support costs, these are costs created for making the mock up where you try out the various configurational details. Then there are some structural test tricks, for example, landing gear testing is to be carried out by dropping it at some height with some weight. Then you have to do iron bird simulators where the whole system is integrated, all the uh, actuators, what out items, accessories are put together and on the ground you test the functioning of the aircraft under various loads and various operating conditions. This is an example of an iron bird facility where uh, data regarding the performance of the various actuators and various systems uh, is recorded on the ground. There may not be, there may not be an actual aircraft there, but it may be just a facility on the ground which is going to simulate the working of the aircraft. So, uh, Boeing has developed an integrated test vehicle ITV for 787-8 and we will share information regarding this particular uh, sim, uh, iron bird simulator in our uh, material for reading. Uh, we can notice here that uh, this is a comparison of the life cycle cost of F-22 and F-35-2 aircraft. Notice that the, uh, the column for disposal cost of F-35 is right now blank because there is no clue and the disposal cost uh, of uh, you know a billion USD is uh, an estimate, an estimate. So, there are 195 aircraft to be produced and a billion dollars will be spent in their disposal at the end of their cycle. Uh, for F-35, the original planning was to produce 2443 aircraft and we have no idea what will be spent in their disposal. But if disposal cost is ignored right now, the life cycle of the aircraft comes to around 0.7 billion USD as against 0.46 billion USD for an F-35. The cost prediction models, uh, you know, <coughs> I mentioned about RAND DAPCA 4 model. Uh, this is a standard model. There are other models also. For example, there is a uh, US Air Force has a life cycle cost model called as MLCCM. Uh, we have seen about the RAND DAPCA 4 model. Uh, these are the equations uh, which are uh, available for the DAPCA 4 model. These numbers are applicable for 1986 dollars and they have to be scaled up using the inflation factor. Uh, all these equations are available either online or in this case they are available in the standard textbooks like the textbook by Raymer. So, what you just have to understand is that some of the important parameters like the empty weight of the aircraft or the DCPR weight, the maximum velocity and the quantity to be produced. These are the three main factors, number of flight test aircraft, what is the maximum velocity and um, you know what is the maximum thrust, all that is uh, going to play a role. Uh, the quantity of the aircraft to be produced also comes into uh, play when you look at the manufacturing material cost. So, if you, uh, if you look at the combination of all the parameters, uh, you have the engineering, tooling, manufacturing, quality control and then uh, equipment which are uh, allowed, flight testing. So, number of engines into, into the cost per engine, avionics, all of these when you add you get the RDTNE and the flyaway cost. Thanks for your attention, we will now move to the next section.